So today, the 26th Mercury aligns with Nashira, the good tidings at the end of the fish portion of Capricorn, the church springing forth to life from the blood atonement of the Lord, and then onwards to meet Deneb El Gedi tomorrow. And that star has a little bit more darker meaning of the coming judgment or slaughter. Then Mercury will transition from Capricorn into the constellation Aquarius and move towards Saturn when um, they will conjoin a little bit later. Today the moon is at the Pleiades, the representation of the seven churches in the book of Revelation. And each of these churches have a lampstand, so the Pleiades cluster the Seven Sisters Cluster is a representation of the seven churches in the book of Revelation. And then we will see the moon traverse further into the constellation Taurus and align with the Hyades Cluster, which is in the forehead of the bull. So, Mercury at Deneb El Gedi on the 27th, the marker for the coming slaughter and the coming sacrifice. The moon will be at first quarter tomorrow, the division between the lit part because the sun is on this side and the darker part on the other side, a reflection of the division of the wise and the foolish. So the first quarter moon and remember that the calendar we are currently looking at, Torah calendar, has ongoing Sabbaths but the early Christians kept the lunar Sabbath calendar. So the four phases of the moon, this being the first, the first quarter moon, then the full moon, then the third quarter moon, and then the dark moon, those were assigned to the Sabbath. So that is uh, something to keep in mind as well. Then um, at the first quarter moon, the moon will align with the cluster known as the Hyades cluster in the forehead of the bull we have the bright uh, red star Aldebaran in the right eye of the bull but the left eye of the bull is the star Ayin and that is the representation of the church of Philadelphia then the moon will go further on the ecliptic past the uh, horn of the bull, the left horn of the bull, to then meet up and later occult Mars. The lunar occultation of Mars, the 28th of February, uh, next Tuesday, and this is uh, from the vantage point of Jerusalem. That's where the occultation is not visible. It's only visible in the northern Arctic, just like I explained. So that's actually going to be a twinkling in Taurus the bull and seen on the firmament covered earth that is going to be in the center of the eye. The moon will then uh, transfer from uh, constellation Taurus into Gemini. This is the bride and groom cluster or sorry the bride and groom constellation in the heavens and this is the train of the bride. So this is the right figure the bridal portion of the gemini bride and groom cluster and it is um, an extended cluster so the moon is going to spend uh, three days in this constellation this is the area known in the heavens as the celestial silver gate with towards the bull origa the shepherd or the charioteer the Bride and Groom Cluster, Gemini, and of course Orion. We see the Club of Orion just underneath here. And this was also the area that was marked in the first 9-11 attacks because the uh, constellation Gemini represented the Twin Towers. Uh, Jupiter then was in between the Bride and Groom portion. That was a representation of Building 7. The five brightest stars of the constellation Origa, the inner pentagram of the constellation, was uh, represented by the Pentagon, uh, so-called attack, attack by a plane we know much better now. 
But what we, they were doing at the time was a direct reenactment of what was seen in the heavens above. I'm not saying that the alignment of the moon in the silver gate is a foreboding of a repetition, but it is important to be uh, aware that a lot of the things that the enemy is doing is not by a uh, read out calendar, but it is by the celestial clock. The visibility of the occultation of Mars is only in the northern Arctic area and of course on a firmament covered model that would be the center of the model. Then the conjunction of Mercury and Saturn. So that is the second conjunction on March the 2nd in the constellation Aquarius. So here we have a depiction of them nearing one another prior to conjunction, but this image is to show the entry of Pluto, which is associated with Hades in the underworld, from its previous constellation. The constellation Sagittarius is to the right of Pluto, but on the uh, from the second to the third, Pluto will enter into the asterism borders of the constellation. Capricorn. So this is the goat portion transitioning in to the fish portion. Of course, the conjunction of Venus and Jupiter, Venus culminating at 144. And on that day of the double conjunction, the moon will be in the center of the bridal figure in the bride and groom cluster. So Yes, the uh, other flanking sign will be that the sun will be in the center of the water stream in Aquarius. Remember that the water flow of Aquarius goes to the southern fish, which is um, a representation of the sign of Jonah. We covered that in the previous video. And the center of the water stream can also be the uh, greater outpouring of living water and of blessing, but at the same time also a sign of judgment by waters. The waters breaking is one of the phases of uh, birth which will um, further the active labor. And we know that the Lord has equated the time that we are in currently with a birthing process. So here we see the direct alignment of the sun with the center star in the water stream. The moon will go onward to be exactly in between the bride and groom on the 2nd of March. Comedy 3 will transition from the constellation Taurus, the borders of that constellation go all the way over here, so the alignment is with Orion, but the position is still within Taurus until the third. Then it will cross over into the constellation Eridanus. That is the fiery river of the judge. It's a really lengthy constellation um, stemming from the belt stars of Orion. So that is a representation of the Nile River and the Giza Plateau in the heavens. But I believe the uh, alignment of E3 um, exiting Taurus and entering the fiery river of the judge is a foreboding of judgment. The moon at Apogee, uh, she will be furthest removed from the earth on March the 3rd. So uh, the appearance of the moon will be smaller. The Theta Carina cluster in the keel of the Ark, sorry there's no picture over here, but the Argo Navis constellation um, to uh, the southwest of Orion. That is the picture of the Ark uh, with Sirius as the bow star and the dove is flying underneath the bow star, underneath the wings of the Hawk constellation Sirius. Um, but the Ark is at culmination and the Lord is, I think, speaking to us, um, of course, the importance of seeking salvation in him now, but also making sure, making your calling sure that you are ready to stand before him, walking by faith, by love, and obedience to him, because he is looking 
for a faithful bride. So he's going to collect his harvest in different portions based on people's um, surrender, their wholehearted surrender to the Lord. Venus at Meridian at 144. We covered that just like the entry into Capricorn of Hades, of Pluto, sorry, representing Hades. Here we can see a depiction of Pluto from Sagittarius into the constellation Capricorn um, at this time stamp. So between the second and the third. And also to the south of the constellation Orion. Remember that we just saw the Eridanus fiery river flowing from the belt stars. Well, this is the southernmost part of that river. So we're still underneath the constellation Orion. Uh, flanking that constellation is the constellation Horologium. And that is like a pendulum clock. And there is a lot of prophetic meaning with regard to the comets going through this clock, but I'm going to focus on the comet K2 pan stars over here because on the 4th of March is going to mark the midnight or the noon hour. So I think this is something worthy to consider because a lot of prophetic references in scripture point to darkness at noon. So this is uh, one of the markers the Lord uh, caught my attention toward. So let us take a look at the three o'clock marker of the comet E3, which is um, transitioning from Taurus into the river uh, Eridanus. But at the time of the meridian marker, which is always the green line, meaning that the constellation Orion is now at the highest point in the heavens, you see that the comet has the position of 90 degrees toward the uh, belt star Mintaka, which is the uh, representation of the Giza plateau, the entire belt. So we have the belt stars of Orion, which uh, depict the central Menkara pyramid and the two pyramids flanking the Menkaur Center Pyramid, where the Sphinx is aligned with. So, Comedy 3 on the 4th will align with the Mintaka star, the northernmost star. And the next day, it will align with the central star, um, Al Nilam. So, that is a representation of the Menkaur Pyramid, that is the capped pyramid. The leftmost star, El Nitak, is the representation of the Khufu Pyramid. That is the uh, bridal altar, altar and witness in stone, the former dwelling of the Lord, the representation of the bride on the plateau. It used to be encased with beautifully polished white limestones, just like a bride adorned for her husband. So the alignment of the comet at the three o'clock position is from the 4th until the 8th. Here we see the 6th of March, the 7th of March, and then the 8th. So here in this beautiful graph by Marchman Lou Vega, we see the representation of the Revelation 12 sign, the culmination where the moon was between or at the feet of Virgo. Jupiter had already been birthed on the 10th, and um, on the 20th, Venus had been crowned in the conjunction with Regulus. But the image shows that Mercury, Mars, and Venus were a representation of the Giza Plateau at the time, also reflected in the belt stars of Orion. Then we see the cutting free of the horizontal fish by Venus on the 8th. And on the 11th, the E3 comet in the center of the river Eridanus. So having reached the end of the presentation, I uh, hope you enjoy reading the article. And I pray the Lord's blessing of peace and of humility of us seeking 
you in humility, Lord, to be ready for you at your coming.